Ah. Hey everybody, Dick and Guilty here, and welcome back to A Sucker for Steelbooks, which is going to be a little ironic, because this episode, I have absolutely no steelbooks, so, yeah, uh, there's that, but, hello, welcome back to A Sucker for Steelbooks, my, of course, my, uh, every once in a while Blu-ray collection up, uh, update on you guys, show you guys all the Blu-rays I've bought in the last couple weeks or months or whatever, uh, this is going to be basically the masterpiece episode, because I have, like, 99% of the stuff I have in this video are all masterpieces, and, uh, I'm going to tell you this man my pick of the haul this time is going to be a bit of a surprise for a lot of you people because i'm sure a lot of you people probably think you know what it's going to be based off the thumbnail but you might get a little uh you might get a little bit of a plot twist so without further ado let's jump in with this is of course episode four i believe of a sucker for steel books i do believe uh let's get into this first up of course the absolute big one the big one Malignant, yes, it is finally here. This was, was my favorite movie of 2021 until the very end. Yes, at the very end of 2021, one movie came out and defeated it. And I will go ahead and tell you, no, it is not Spider-Man No Way Home. A different movie beats this at the very end of this year. But hopefully we will talk about that in the next episode of the series. But uh, Malignant, I absolutely fucking love this movie. Uh, James Wan is my favorite is my favorite director of all time. He made my, fav my current favorite movie of all time, which is Saw 2004. This is a movie I was really excited for. I was really looking forward to it. When it came out, it was split directly down the middle. Some people absolutely loved it. Some people absolutely hated it, which is why I have Mew Ruma here, because it's the same deal with her, Mrs. Mew, who 99% who like, not not night, like 50% of people absolutely love and 50% of people absolutely despise. And once again, I'm on this camp because I absolutely fucking loved Malignant. I thought this movie was so fun, so enjoyable. I don't really want to tell you uh, anything else about it because I want you to experience this movie for yourself because the ending of this movie is bonkers, batshit, insane, and I absolutely love it. Um, everything about this movie slaps, though. The score is absolutely incredible. The opening is so great. Uh, I love how, like, how fun and, and over-the-top this movie is, especially in the third act. It gets so crazy. The characters are pretty good. There's some really good direction in this movie, of course, by James Wan. There's a really great, uh, chase scene that I really love that was really well done. A lot of really creepy moments, a very scary movie overall, and a really awesome horror villain, horror icon. I definitely think the, uh, the villain of this movie has the potential to go down as a new horror icon, because I think he is really fucking awesome. Um, I love the design of the character. I love the design of uh, of how there's uh, there's something there's some things in this movie that are really cool. Like they kind of take a different take on it. Like one thing I guess I could talk about. This isn't really a spoiler. The way the movie works, there are these scenes where the main character it gets like a, like her reality gets like twisted and like you've seen it in the trailers if you've seen the trailers for this movie. Um, and it's a really awesome visual that I think James Wan pulled off absolutely beautifully. So I'm I'm really really happy about this. Now I did sell for the standard Blu-ray. Uh, there was no Best Buy exclusive steelbook for this time around. There was a Zavi exclusive steelbook, and I did think it looked nice, but I actually preferred the uh, the standard look. I actually preferred this, and yeah, this is the blue I went with right there. So we have uh, what's what's her name, uh, Annabelle Wallace. I actually have not rewatched this since uh, buying it, which I was not expecting. I thought I was gonna watch this movie like 50 billion times uh, after uh, getting it on Blu-ray, but uh, no, I haven't. Like I said, a movie did come out at the very end of 2021 that did overthrow this, which definitely shocked me. But um. Yeah, I, I do really, really love this movie, though. I do. It's definitely my second favorite movie of 2021. But uh, to go with the Blu-ray, it's really, really nice. It comes out like this. Uh, very cool. I actually gave the uh, digital code to a friend of mine who hadn't seen the movie. I don't know if he's watched it yet, so I don't know what he thought of it. Um, here is the back, a new vision of terror right there. If you have not seen Malignant and you like James Wan, you like horror movies, 1,000% recommend. I really do love this movie. I can definitely say this is uh, one of my favorite horror movies in quite a good bit. I think, I do think this is definitely... Uh, uh, definitely gonna be one of my favorite horror movies for a good time because it, it, it's just a blast. It's just a really fucking fun time. So yeah, uh, there you go. That is the first thing I got. Malignant. Yes, this is not the pick of the hall. Okay, next up, Die Hard. Yes, another movie that I would personally consider a masterpiece. This is, of course, the action movie of... Uh, this is easily the greatest action movie I've ever watched, man. Uh, Die Hard is a movie that I did not grow up with. I did not grow up with Die Hard at all. I saw it very late in my life. My mom is an absolute, like, a, like a stand for this movie. I think this is her favorite movie of all time. I'm pretty sure I believe this is her favorite movie of all time. She, all, she talks about this movie, like, so much, more than any other movie, easily. And uh, I, I hadn't seen it until I was, like, 20 
20 years old when I finally watched it with her uh, when she got her Blu-ray uh, and I watched it for the first time. I loved it on that first watch. I did. I really loved it. But I found the Blu-ray at Target the other day and I, uh, not at Target, I forget where this was. Uh, I found the Blu-ray um, the other day and I decided to watch it again and my favorite my, and my favorite YouTuber Cody Leach uh, did his uh, Die Hard review which really made me want to watch the movie again. And on the second watch, dude, fucking holy shit, dude, this movie is out of this world phenomenal. Like, my lord, dude, everything about this movie, like, I, I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even completely take in how awesome this fucking movie was on the first watch, man. It is so, so good. I, like, you've seen Die Hard. Everybody's seen Die Hard. This movie is iconic. It's one of the, like, I think it's, like, one of the most celebrated movies of all time. And with good reason, it is just awesome. The action in this movie is awesome. The characters in this movie are awesome. The sequence in this movie are awesome. The way that this character goes about this situation that he finds himself in, how smart he is. The there's so many great scenes, like the like the elevator shaft scene when he's in the elevator shaft. He has like the machine gun, and he has to like use the machine gun to like hold himself on the vent and then swing over to another one of the vents. Like there's so many scenes like that where you're like, man, this dude is so smart. I really want him to beat this. And then uh, as you go through the movie, it just gets bigger and bigger, and more things happen. And even though I think the best part about this movie is even even though he actually manages to get more people, he actually manages to get the police and everything involved in this situation with the terrorists taking over this building, in the end, he is still the one that beats them. The freaking people outside, they do next to nothing to actually beat these terrorists. It's all John McClane. He is the one that single-handedly stops them all. And that is fucking awesome. Oh my lord, man. I love Die Hard. I absolutely love Die Hard. Once again, not the pick of the haul, but I, I really, really love this movie, man. It's just a ton of fun. I'll be watching this movie over and over again. Because it's just a blast, man. Die Hard is such an absolute blast. It is a bit long, I will say. It is a bit of a long movie. But honestly, not one second of that bores me in the slightest. It is such a blast of a movie. And yeah, I give it an S tier by far. By the way, Malignant is also an S tier. Uh, Die Hard, actually, I'm going to give it an S plus. I, I love Die Hard. I think this movie is fucking incredible. And if by some miracle you have not seen Die Hard, holy shit, do yourself a favor and watch Die Hard. But here's the Blu-ray. It's got Bruce Willis right there. There is the back. And I don't think my digital code is in here. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. And uh, yeah, there it is right there. Nothing special about the inside. But love this movie, man. Die Hard. Fucking rules. Absolutely love this movie. That's an S+. Plus. Alright, we'll, we'll make this one very quick. So you remember last episode I talked about Home Alone in depth and I finally watched it and I absolutely loved it. Well, uh, I was at Target the other day and I actually found this much cooler release of Home Alone that has this really nice slip cover and I decided to upgrade mine. It wasn't very expensive at all so I decided to get this because this is, I'm going to tell you right now, after another watch of both of these movies, this is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. This is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I cannot wait for every single Christmas for me to watch these movies again because I absolutely love them, man. I love these movies. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on uh, on Home Alone, go check out the last episode. I talked about it more in there. Uh, but I found this new, this uh, much cooler release at Target with this slip cover. You guys know, sucker for slip cover, sucker for f uh, fancy Blu-rays. And I I decided to grab it because it wasn't very much. It wasn't very expensive at all. And I love this movie. This is one of my favorite movies I have seen in a very very long time. I absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, and I decided to uh, what I ended up doing with the old Blu-ray was I actually gave it to my mom, who tells me that she doesn't love Home Alone, so I gave it to her. She tells me that she doesn't love it, but that she watches it every year regardless, so I was like, yeah, hey, I'm gonna give it to her, because she loves it so much that she watches it every year. Don't worry, I gave her another present as well. It wasn't the only thing I got her. I'm not that big of a douche, but uh, it was it was a kind of a funny little gag gift to throw in there, so yeah. But there you go. want to make that one very quick. If you want to know more, go check out the last episode of A Sucker for Steelbooks, because I talk about it a lot more in there. So, there you go. Konosuba 2! Oh my lord, Konosuba! Okay, so obviously I talked about Konosuba Season 1. Actually, I talked about Konosuba in general in the last episode, Konosuba Season 1. And I actually, real quick, I want to, uh, I want to fix something in the last episode. I didn't even show the, uh, the unsleeved Blu-ray, which is a shame because it's a really cool looking cover. I love the cover, you know, you got all the characters right there, which, yeah, I really like that cover. I'm sorry I did not show that. You even have Wiz down there, which is great. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. Here's the back as well. So I wanted to rectify 
apply that real quick and show you guys the uh, cover. I don't even think I showed you the back, actually. There's the back right there. Okay, Kota Suba. This is one of my favorite animes I have watched. I really, really love the show. I think it's an absolute blast. I really, really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. And I did pick up the second season. Uh, I, I, I had only that one in the last episode. I did pick up the second season, though. And upon rewatch, I have rewatched this show twice more. So I've watched it three times in total. Upon rewatch, I actually do like season one a little bit more. I said in the last episode that I probably like season two a little bit more. After two more watches, I enjoy season one a little bit more than season two. I still really like season two. It's definitely not a huge downgrade or anything like that. It's still an absolute blast and I love it. But I do like season one a little bit more. It felt like season one had a little bit more girth, of, had a little bit more, um, had a little bit more meat on it. The story had a little bit more meat on it, especially by the ending. I do think this, uh, th that the story is great in this as well. I love this show. I love the characters in this show. Uh, if you want to know more about Konosuba, I talk about it a lot in the, uh, in the last episode of A Sucker for Steelbooks, but this is just a really fun anime. If you like anime, I 100% recommend this. It's super fun. All the characters are an absolute blast to watch, and they play off of each, uh, and they play off of, e of uh, they play off of each other so well. It, it really Really is great like they're such an inseparable group and they're all and they're all so fun when they when they just bounce off of each other um and, and yeah it's it's a ton of fun watching them just kind of live their lives all kind of going through this and they're like okay i'm having a hard time talking about it but it's a really really good show i highly highly recommend konosuba if you haven't watched it and you like anime just an absolutely fantastic show it will make you laugh a lot because it's absolutely hilarious so yeah uh there you go konosuba season two very very good one there you go and my final pickup of the haul i told you guys it was a bit of a light one but this is my pick of the haul your name Okay, I've heard about this movie a lot from a lot of people because it is a very, very highly praised movie. People talk about it all the time. And I was starting to get the desire to want to check it out. I wanted to watch it and see what all the fuss was about. It's not really available for free to watch anywhere. You have to pay for it pretty much anywhere. Um, so I, I, I haven't seen it, so I hadn't seen it yet. But then I went to Target a couple weeks ago and they had this little anime section. There was some things there, a lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff there. And I saw this movie there and I looked at it and the Blu-ray is absolutely gorgeous. Like I love I love this Blu-ray, it is so shiny and so pretty, and, I've, and I was just looking at it and I did something that I have never, that I never do. I bought a Blu-ray of a movie that I had not seen. I never do this. I only buy Blu-rays for movies if it's like S tier for me, or at least A tier. Like, I never blindly buy a movie just so I can watch it. I never blind, blindly, bl blindly buy a Blu-ray of a movie that I haven't seen. But I did this time. I went home and I watched it. And from beginning to end, from the first second of this movie to the last second of the end credits, this movie is capital P perfection. I am obsessed with this movie right now, and I can safely say it is officially one of my favorite movies of all time. I am in love with this film. I cannot even put into words how much I love this movie. This movie transcends perfection. It transcends masterpiece. It is on another level, it is just incredible. This movie, that the animation of this movie puts Pixar movies to shame. The soundtrack was done by a Japanese band called Radwimps, and they did the soundtrack for the English version as well. Because you guys know, I watch dubs, I watch English versions when it comes to anime and whatnot. And them doing, the same people who did the Japanese version, doing the English version, the soundtrack is absolutely masterful. Every single song in this will have you on the verge of tears. They are so perfectly woven into the movie, and they're so beautiful, and oh my god, I love this fucking movie, dude. If you ever, if you ever take a single one of my freaking suggestions, if you ever take a single one of my recommendations, just one, Please, God, let it be this movie. Do not leave this earth without watching your name. Please, God, do not. This movie is fucking flawless. I am just in love with it. I have no other words to say. I absolutely love it. The basic gist, I want to give you just a little bit, a little bit of what it's about. I'm not going to tell you a ton about it. The only thing I'm going to tell you about it is this movie is about two people. They both live in Japan and they randomly start switching lives. Basically, they'll wake up one day and they'll have switched lives. And then they'll wake up the next day and they'll be back to normal. And then a couple days later, they'll wake up and they'll switch lives again. This happens randomly and they don't know why it's happening. And that that that's basically like the big gist. And then there's plot twists. Big, humongous plot twists. And at that point, my lips are sealed. I don't want to tell you anything else about it. But that's the basic gist of this movie. And it is 
just uh, immaculate, immaculate. This movie fucking is, this movie is just, I, I'm struggling to come up with more things to say about it. It is that fucking good. And the ending, at the end of this movie, I was bawling like a fucking baby. Like, I've watched this movie five times since getting it, and I think three times the ending absolutely had me just wailing. It was so sad. I cried harder at the end of this movie than I have that I ever had at the end of Coco, at the end of fucking, I don't know, pick, pick the sad movie. This movie made me cry harder, man. The ending is so fucking perfect. It's so beautiful. I got, I got nothing more, man. This movie fucking is just incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Please, God, if you have not seen your name, this is the one movie. If you take any one of my suggestions, man, if there is a movie, if a movie exists that has the ability to top Saw 2004 as my favorite movie of all time, this has got to be it, man. Only time will tell. I mean, maybe after a couple, maybe like after like 10 more watches, it will happen, but only time will tell. But if a movie exists that has the ability to do that, this has got to be it, dude, because this movie, I got no words to say how fucking flawless this movie is. Your name gets an, it gets, I'm creating a new grade for your name, S++. This movie is phenomenal. And there you have it, everybody. That is the episode of A Sucker for Steelbooks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you seen your name? If you have, leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'd love to talk to you about it. I fucking adore that movie. And, uh, yeah, once again, leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks, all, thanks so much for watching. And this is DK Guillotine, signing out.